So I start my presentation. You see my disclosures. So the first case deals with a 59-year-old man who was first seen for a decompensation of an alcoholic cirrhosis in October 2003. He had ascites, edema, pleural effusion, as you can see on the images, and E10 cirrhosis, first degree varices. He was put on diuretics, lost 10 kilos. He stopped drinking alcohol. During 2004 and 2005, he had some residual ascites, which was controlled by diuretics, and intermittent paracentesis for creatinine elevations. The further workup found a nephrotic syndrome with a protein loss of two grams a day. And since protein urea worsened, he was put on ACE inhibitors. Under that, the ascites was controlled with spironolactone and the kidney biopsy at that moment revealed a membranous glomerulonephritis and no immune suppressive therapy was done at that moment. So my first question would be, do you propose an HCC surveillance for this patient? So no, because no surveillance in the absence of a viral co-infection. Yes, you perform every six months alpha fetoprotein. You perform every six months an ultrasound, an ultrasound every three months, or you perform a combination of both. Please vote. Well, most of you will do both, so ultrasound and fetoprotein. The recommendation from the three societies, ASLD, ESL, and ESMO, is to perform every six months only an ultrasound. So that is what we've done. I must apologize for the quality of the ultrasound images. In May 2008, there was a normal ultrasound, but in December 2008, a two centimeter hypoechogenic lesion was seen in the liver. There was a work up with MRI, and you see on the left side the early arterial phase and the venous phase, alpha fetoprotein is within the normal range. So my next question, do you perform a biopsy of that lesion? No, because MRI is sufficient. No, if another technique, let's say CT scan, confirms the result of the MRI, yes because the imaging technique is insufficient? Yes, but only because alpha fetoprotein is normal, or you perform always a biopsy. Please vote. So there are quite different answers. 20% would say that MRI imaging is sufficient. I think the state of art today is that if you have either MRI or C dynamic CT scan who shows the hallmark I showed you with the arterial uptake of contrast medium and the rapid wash out is sufficient for the diagnosis of HCC and you don't need to perform a biopsy in that condition. So we stay with a patient, 64 years old, good performance status, child A cirrhosis, alcoholic who stopped drinking, he has a MELT score of eight, one HCC of 20 millimeters. There are no arguments for a distant spread. He has a nephrotic syndrome. He has a portal hypertension with first degree varices. What treatment do you offer to this patient? A liver and kidney transplantation? A liver transplantation? A surgical resection? a radiofrequency ablation, or do you perform a TACE? Please vote. So most of you would perform a surgical resection. If you take the most used algorithm, which is a BCLC classification, this patient is somewhere between a stage zero or stage eight. So he clearly needs a curative treatment and three options are possible. You could perform a radiofrequency ablation. You could also discuss a surgical resection. 
but in that case, it might be some problem because he has portal hypertension, he has nephrotic syndrome, so there may be concern about decompensation after surgery. And so the treatment we choose is a liver transplantation. And for our nephrologists, there was no need for a simultaneous kidney transplantation. He has a MELT-8 score, so he will be some time on the waiting list, and there might be concerns about tumor progression. So my next question would be, do you consider some bridging therapy for this patient? No, there is no need for a small HCC under two centimeters. You start sorafenib, you perform a radiofrequency ablation, you perform a TAFE or just an embolization, or you make a combination of TAFEs and sorafenib. Please vote. So most would do some form of embolization. Yeah. Despite the fact that embolization is largely used, I must say that there are no really evidence data that support this approach. Well, we performed this embolization in February 2009. You see the arterial face on the left side and the results after the embolization. After 10 months, the patient got liver transplanted. The post-operative cause was uneventful. Histology revealed a well-differentiated HCC of 22 centimeters with a 95% necrosis. There was no microvascular invasion, and on explant, a second six millimeter large nodule was found. So we are now in June 2013, three and a half years post-transplantation. The patient is perfectly well. There are no signs of tumor recurrence, and he is on low-dose tacrolismus and mucophenolatmofetil. The second case I want to present starts in May 2008. It's a 71-year-old man with abdominal pain who came to his emergency ward. He's known by his GP for an alcoholic liver disease and stopped drinking in 2000. You see the CT scan, which shows a large mass in segment one and seven, about six centimeters. So you are faced with a 71-year-old man in a good performance status, no comorbidities, a child A6 cirrhosis, no ascites, no encephalopathy, no varices, MELT score is 10, alpha fetoprotein is 1,138, and this mass of nearly 6 centimeters without any signs for distant spread of the tumor. So what treatment would you recommend to this patient? A liver transplantation, a surgical resection, a radiofrequency ablation, a TACE, or you start sorafenib. Please vote. So most of you would perform a surgical resection. If we take the BCLC classification, we are in an intermediate stage of HCC. So one would propose first line some palliative treatment, and in this case, a taste. Liver transplantation was not considered because the patient is outside of the Milan criteria, and furthermore, he has a high alpha fetoprotein and also a mental score of 10, and he is 71 year old. Surgery, there's a large lesion, and our surgeons had concern about the access. Radiofrequency, the lesion is too large with nearly six centimeters, and sorafenib is only considered if not a more effective treatment is available. So the patient got a taste in May 2008. We are now one year later, in May 2009. The patient is quite well. He has a performer status one. Cirrhosis is stable, child A5. Alpha fetoprotein went down to 120. And you see the control scan with the arterial 
and venous phase, there was no sign of contrast medium uptake. As you can see, there's good shrinkage of the tumor compared to the CT scan of May 2008 on the left side. But as you can see on the right side, a portal thrombosis, partial portal thrombosis had occurred, which continued to the vena mesenterica superior. We are now one and a half year post first treatment. The clinical status is unchanged. Alpha fetoprotein has tripled. And on MRI, the mass is 35 millimeters. There is uptake of contrast medium. And there is a dilatation of biliary branches. So there's clear progression of the tumor. So what, tra what treatment do you consider now? You wait and see at that stage because the patient is quite well. It is now progression to end stage disease, so you offer him best supportive care. You start a systemic therapy with Zorafenib. You repeat TACE or you consider radiofrequency ablation. Please vote. So most of you would start now a systemic therapy. Some would repeat a taste. Only a few one would do a radio frequency ablation. Well, progression does not mean failure of taste, and the first option would be to repeat taste. But this patient had now a partial portal thrombosis, so there might be concerns. And in the second line, you can discuss to start a systemic therapy with Zorabfenib, but If you remember, we are faced now with a small three and a half centimeter tumor, so we decided to perform a radiofrequency ablation under laparoscopic control, and at the same time a biopsy was done to, perform, uh, to confirm the histology of HCC. I skip now a little bit in time. We are in August 2011, So three and a half years from the diagnosis of an unresectable HCC and two years from the last treatment with radiofrequency. The patient is in a good clinical condition. He has a performance status one, a stable cirrhosis child A. But alpha fetoprotein went up again. It's nearly 600. But on imaging technique with MRI, there's no change in size, but there is again arterial contrast uptake. So again, now after two years, there is clear tumor progression. We waited another six months. Clinical status is unchanged. Alpha fetoprotein went up to 900. And now on MRI, we see that there is more pronounced contrast uptake. The tumor increased in segment 1 to 45 millimeters, and two new nodules appeared in the liver. So at that time, we started Zorafenib, 800 milligrams a day, but despite this treatment, alpha fetoprotein went up to nearly 1,600, and after 20 weeks of treatment, Sorafenib had to be stopped because of side effects. So my question is now, what to do now? So first, it is now progression to end-stage disease and you offer best supportive care. You start tamoxifen. You try to enter the patient in a study for a new drug or you repeat radiofrequency. Please vote. So most of you would enter the patient in a new study for a new drug. Well, we are four and a half year post taste for an unresectable HCC, so it is a clear progression of the tumor and two new nodules appeared in the liver. But does that mean that it is really end staged and you offer just best supportive care? The patient still is Within the rules, I would call five, so less than five nodules up to five centimeters. 
So since we had a good result with the first treatment with radiofrequency, the second treatment of the three nodules was done. Of course, postoperatively, we saw some decompensation of the liver, but the patient recovered within six weeks. Unfortunately, in November 2012, the patient had a seizure and a stroke with a temporary left hemiparesis and aphasia. He was last seen now in June 2013. He has a child B cirrhosis, performer status of 2. Alpha fetoprotein is down to 150. He is clearly in a stage D in the BCLC classification, so we offer him best supportive care. So I presented you now a case of an unresectable 6 centimeter HCC tumor treated over five years with a good quality of life. So at the beginning, we have been in the intermediate stage B, and a taste was performed, which led to a shrinkage of the tumor. The patient entered in the Milan criteria, and in a certain setting, we could have discussed a transplantation but he developed portal thrombosis, so an advanced disease. When he progressed, taste was not possible, but instead of switching just to a systemic therapy, we tried a more aggressive approach with radiofrequency ablation. This led to a stabilization, and when the patient progressed, he was put on sorafenib. This was not effective, and at that time, instead of doing a taste, we repeat it again, a radiofrequency ablation. Unfortunately, there was a good tumor response, but due to comorbidities, the patient ended up in a terminal stage and now is offered best supportive care. So HCC treatment today is a multidisciplinary task, and I want to thank the co-workers of the group of the hepatobiliary diseases of our hospital, and especially since we do not have a transplantation center in Luxembourg, our friends and co-workers in France and Belgium for their help. Thank you for your attention.